Hello YouTube, Luigi here. Today's video is titled Fun with Fibonacci. Who or what is Fibonacci? Fibonacci was an Italian mathematician who lived in Pisa. His name was Leonardo Fibonacci. Leonardo of Pisa, he's sometimes called, and you remember Pisa as the town with the crooked tower. Now, he came up with a series of numbers, and the series is generated this way. You start with the number you're on. You always start with one. The next number of the series is the number you're on plus the previous number. That's the next number. Well, there is no previous number, so one plus nothing is one again. Take the number you're on, add it to the previous number to get the next number. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Three plus two is five. And so on and so forth. I'm going to just throw these down here quickly from memory. I could go a little higher from memory, but that's good enough. So here we go. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, etc., etc. Now, why is this number important? Well, we'll get to that. You're going to see the coolest things if you stay with me. If I take this number and divide it by the next number, if I take 1 divided by 1, I get 1. If I take 1 divided by 2, I get 0.5. If I take 2 divided by 3, I get 0 0.66. If I take 3 divided by 5, I get 0.6. If I take 5 divided by 8, I get 0 0.625. And I would need a calculator to go further. But the point is, these numbers will asymptotically approach an absolute value of 0 0.618. This is the constant phi. Now, if I take a line segment, you all know what a line segment is, right? You study geometry, right? What's the difference between a line segment and a line? A line extends to infinity in both directions. A line segment is just a chunk of that line. So if I take a line, there's only one place I can divide a line segment where the ratio of the smaller segment to the larger segment is the same as the ratio of the larger segment to the whole. This larger segment is 0 0.618 times the length of the, of the larger segment, of the whole. This larger segment is, curiously enough, 1.618 times this length. So there's a relationship between 0 0.618 and 1.618. And the truth is, if you multiply these two together, you get 1. Wow! One times one is one, but 0 0.618 times 1.618 also equals one. Now, we're going to jump to the next, uh, to another sheet of paper here. The really cool thing you can do with these numbers is, remember, one, one, two, three, five, eight. Take, uh, take one. We're going to draw a square. That's one unit by one unit. It can be any unit. It can be a centimeter, a millimeter, an inch, a foot, a yard, a mile, a parsec. And, and draw another, the next number in the series is one. Remember, we have two ones. One, one. Draw another square one by one. The next number is two. Draw another square two by two. Now, I know this is two because one and one is two. I can use that side. The next number is three. I'm going to draw a square three by three. Next number is 5. I'm going to draw a square 5 by 5. You get the point. This is 8 by 8. This square is 13 by 13. The next square would be, if I had room on the paper, 21 by 21. Now, here's the cool part. If I put my pen point at this corner of the first square and connect it to the opposite corner with a quarter of a circle, I keep doing that as I work around. Here's the magic, people. We generate the Fibonacci spiral. 
Why is this important? It's important because we see it absolutely everywhere in the cosmos, from the way hair grows on the top of your head to the arms of a spiral galaxy and everything in between. You can see this pattern in the pattern of a pineapple or a sunflower. It's everywhere. This ratio, going back to this sheet, gives us the sides of a, what's called a golden rectangle. If I have a side that's one unit, and another side that's 1.618, that's a golden rectangle. There's another way to generate this golden rectangle. You start with a square. You put your, remember what a compass is, you people? You put your compass here and your, and your pencil point there and you swing an arc. And then if you connect this, that's also a golden rectangle. Now if we go back to this, this is a golden rectangle. 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 And on and on and on. It's a wonderful progression. I'm going to go back to this page for a minute. You have to remember, before Leonardo Fibonacci brought Arabic numerals to Europe, they were trying to multiply things like MDCLXVI times. Well, who the hell can do that? We know how to multiply. I hope kids are still learning how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide by hand in spite of calculators and computers and tablets and everything else. I hope the skill never leaves the world. Let me tell you something. It's really, really handy. So it was Fibonacci who not only gave us the Fibonacci sequence and discovered the universal growth pattern of God, but he also got us away from this. And this cumbersome way of adding, subtract, multiplying, and dividing was what held the Romans back in terms of engineering. The Romans only knew one thing, the Roman arch, and they built everything out of it. The Colosseums, the aqueducts, all their buildings, they only had one tool in the bag. Fibonacci changed all that, but the Roman Empire was long gone by then. The truth is, even up to, even after, beyond Fibonacci's day and age, just because he brought it there doesn't mean it changed overnight. People were making their calculations with Arabic numerals, but expressing the answer in Roman numerals because there were still a lot of throwbacks. Okay, now... This golden rectangle, if you've read the Da Vinci Code, you know how important this is. It shows up everywhere in Renaissance art, everywhere in Greek architecture, everywhere in Egyptian architecture. There's no way to minimize the historical importance of the golden ratio, the golden rectangle. It shows up in your body. Let's see if I can do this here. The, relate, the ratio between here and here, and here and here, digit to digit to digit, is this is 0.618 of this. Got it? It's everywhere. It, this pattern shows trees where to bifurcate their branches. Plants, botany, leaves, the number of leaves per stem. It's, uh, it's all over the place. Once you start opening your eyes up to the Fibonacci series, you will never be the same. I've always said that the closer you come to understanding the Fibonacci spiral, the Fibonacci series, the golden rectangle, the closer you will come to understanding the mystery of God. It's that important. It's that everywhere. Okay, I hope I've stimulated some of you younger viewers to learn more about this fascinating, fascinating uh, thing we call the Fibonacci spiral. Okay? That's it, guys. Um, God bless you. I love you all. Stay curious. Develop a thirst for knowledge. And there's nothing duller than an uncurious person. Okay? Remember, the sexiest thing about anybody is what's between their ears. Okay, take good care. Bye-bye.